Lord, some of the damn adventures I get myself on in the name of uh, remodeling an old trailer. I'm back on these goddamn sand roads. If I get stuck back here, good Lord, these sugar sand roads in Florida, I tell you, at least I, it's always an adventure. Oh, but we do have our our furnace and our AC back in. Good thing we have our AC here on Thursday, January 25th, 2024. It was, it, we need our furnace uh, one night and the AC the next day and the furnace the next night. But uh, we got that done and I've got at least the, the bathroom vanity top and faucets in the back of this truck. If I can get the hell out of here. Uh, anyway, trying to. Th this is all part of living a uh, a debt-free lifestyle. You will find uh, anyone who honestly uh, wants to get rid of debt out of their life will uh, become a major. Uh, peruser of uh, Facebook Marketplace. Good Lord. Uh, so anyway, I, I just needed to do a little bit, bit of a PS about that rant I did last night about, uh, about all of these whiny doomers uh, blaming uh, Elon Musk for the reason they can't get out of debt. It's, uh, you know, it, it's Jeff Bezos' fault that uh, they can't get out of debt. Well, y y you know, I, I mean, if you're working as one of Jeff Bezos' little uh, worker bees, uh, then Jeff Bezos might be the reason uh, you can't get out of debt. But uh, I would say chances are pretty good that uh, Jeff Bezos is uh, not exactly the person to blame for one's, quote, inability to get out of debt. Uh, so I probably uh, was a little too... Uh, what would be the word inclusive in my rant, acting like that nobody listening to this had, uh, you know, made the sacrifices, the material, uh, material lifestyle sacrifices to get out of debt. Uh, there are a few people, and, and I do want to give credit uh, there, there is one man I really need to give credit to, and that is, uh, do you pronounce your name Nielsen or Nelson Alhambra, my sheep ranching buddy who lives in a, uh, tiny house, maybe, uh, maybe a, uh, an off-grid tiny house out in the boonies of Texas. So, Nielsen, you get the, uh, the, the nod of approval uh, for sure. Uh, now, Fat Boy left a comment, and I know that Fat Boy, like me, is now living in a, uh, in a single wide trailer himself. Uh, <clears throat> we need to bring uh, Fat Boy on the show sometime. To uh, for him to tell us his life story, uh, I, I honestly don't know, brother. I, I mean, uh, Fat Boy is one of my good buddies. Uh, I honestly don't know uh, if uh, if Fat Boy walked away uh, from Empire, as it were, or if he. Uh, got, uh, it, it, or whether the universe knocked him upside the head to, uh, get him out of his beautiful home 
in uh, Hawaii to living buried in snow in a single wide trailer in the Midwest. Uh, he has got quite the tale to tell. Someday if he feels like sharing it with us, we'll let uh, Fat Boy tell us his crazy, uh, his crazy tale. But Fat Boy says he is out of debt. And that is good to know. And I'm in and, and Dan and Judy. I don't think Dan and Judy listen to me anymore, but uh, they did it. They are walking their walk. And of course, I, I, I have to uh, give a partial nod to Andy the gardener. I, I've never really understood because it's not really my business. Uh, what uh, Andy the gardener does for money, housing, whatever, it is none of my business. Uh, but my guess is that Andy the gardener is, is living debt free and wouldn't surprise me if Andy has never known what it feels like to be in debt. Uh, but but by and large, and, and I, I mean, I was particularly picking on Doomers uh, because I was responding to a Doomers rant on Medium.com uh, who did not mention anywhere in the story, uh, this fellow Mike, was that Mike Meyer, never mentioned in the story whether he is in debt or not. He, he left that up to the reader to decide. I mean, I guess you're supposed to assume that he is in debt since apparently he has never met anybody, including a fellow Doomer, I guess, who has uh, faced up, you know, looked at themselves in the damn mirror, maybe uh, eating five grams of mushrooms and ayahuasca and San Pedro cactus and uh, to take a, a, a look at their life and a look at their $22,000 Home Depot credit card and uh, all the rest of it and uh, say, okay, uh, am I going to be a, a victim? Uh, a, 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 am, am I going to play the fucking victim game uh, the rest of my fucking life? Am I going to be a slave to the goddamn system? Or, I, or am I going to take some fucking uh, responsibility and some fucking control back over my own life? and uh, get out from under the thumb of the global corporatocracy. And um, I, I know that there, that people listening to that were, were saying, uh, you know, well, well, Hambone, uh, the reason you were able to pay off all of that, uh, all of that debt is because uh, you owned all of that real estate and it was the equity in the real estate. It was my real estate investments. Uh, that is one of the ways, uh, well, it, it is the way that I got myself out of debt. Good fucking God, I had four mortgages. I, I, I was had, in addition to the $22,000 Home Depot credit card and probably the $20,000 regular Visa card, uh, I, I had, I, I was getting up to over $3,000 a month mortgage interest bearing mortgage accounts going out uh, just to service my debt what was probably a thousand dollars a month uh, that I was paying but but yeah uh, I did uh, I, I sold my beautiful uh, four bedroom three bath home at the end of the cul-de-sac on the green belt in South Austin Texas uh, and 
now you add up all four of my tiny houses uh, and my uh, and my trailer you you add up all five of my uh, housing units that I own now and they're about the size of the living room uh, of the house that I sold and uh, I, I'm talking about my main residence and then there, of course there were the uh, the rentals so so yeah uh, I I have nothing to be embarrassed about that's exactly what I did and and there's a lot of people uh, whining about being in debt uh, who have the equity in their houses if you have if, if you have owned your house uh, for five years if you're living in a house bigger than 400 square feet and you've been in that house uh, for at least five years uh, you have the equity to get out uh, of that mortgage debt sell that fucking place sell that fucking three bedroom two bath albatross around your fucking neck and, and you can buy you a perfectly nice uh, perfectly nice place to live uh, but uh, you don't want to do it uh, that, that the, the vast majority of people uh, with uh, with the equity in their houses to uh, to sell that fucking albatross around their neck, pay off that mortgage uh, and, and, and their debts, and pay cash for a perfectly nice uh, little uh, like a little house or God forbid a trailer. Uh, and, and you can live debt free and, and, and tell those fucking uh, credit uh, vultures to go fuck themselves. But you don't want to do it. It's uh, that Greg Brown song that I always reference Who Would Have Thunk It? Uh, great song talking about this very, very subject. How these goddamn boomers. Uh, just, uh, you know, as we get older and uh, we get uh, sucked down into our comfort traps and our little velvet ruts and, uh, you, you know, look back on all of that bullshit, uh, we used to tell ourselves that we could be happy with, with a little cabin out in the woods as long as I've got my honey, as long as I've got someone uh, I love who loves me back, uh, we should be happy uh, in, in, in a little cabin out in the woodlands. Uh, you know, which was the dream when we were younger. But now uh, that we've got the, the fucking uh, you know, four bedroom, three bath hat home in the suburbs and, and, and all of this shit. Uh, no, we can't live without money. Uh, you know, you and your, your little doomer chick forever living in a cabin out in the woods. Uh, throw that out the fucking window. It ain't gonna happen. And the reason it's not going to happen is the is these people who used to have that dream, uh, you know, of finding their soulmate and settling down uh, in a little cabin in the woods, uh, living within their means, has gone out the fucking window as we've sold out uh, to this fucking uh, big fat lie. Uh, who would have thunk it that, uh, that a little cabin uh, out in the woodlands at the e end of a dirt road uh, with my, as long as, as long as I have my little honey, 
I don't need any money, I'm, uh, which is another way of saying I don't need any debt. I need uh, my little doomer chick forever uh, living in, in, a, in a little cabin uh, out in the woodlands. But uh, you ain't going to find a, a, a woman uh, who's going to agree to do that once she has gotten used to a certain uh, level of material comfort and, and lifestyle. That, that she can preach all of this doom and gloom on one hand and uh, all, all of her love for Mother Earth and all of that, but she is not uh, going to scale down once she's, uh, you, you know, once she's gotten uh, herself uh, in this little comfort trap. It ain't gonna happen. Who would have thunk it? So uh, and that that's for the people uh, who have the equity, and uh, and uh, obviously the young man listening to this rant knows exactly who I'm talking about. It's the same thing if, if that that if you are still uh, a, a youngin and you found your little doomer chick, honey, uh, forever, uh, you don't need to be out there uh, getting yourself uh, w w with this fucking albatross around your neck. You don't need to spend over 300,000 fucking dollars uh, for a perfectly nice house. Uh, a perfectly nice house and, and, and piece of land. Uh, but, you know, it's the it, it, it's the the millennials and the generation Zers. Uh, it, it's like they're already in this comfort trap by by the time they're 35 years old. They never had the dream uh, of the little cabin uh, at, at the uh, you, you know at the end of the road. Uh, it's it's not enough. They deserve more. They deserve that three hundred thousand dollar house. I, I have bought uh, twenty one, or is it twenty two pieces of property? What is it? the most expensive place I have ever bought in my entire life? I paid one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars for. Now, I, I mean, obviously, I, I, I didn't pay cash for it. I had a fucking mortgage. 21 fucking houses. I, I have never paid more than $165,000 uh, for, for a house in my entire life. Uh, you know, I paid $35,000 uh, for uh, my little hovel up there in New York. Uh, and... Uh, it, 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 well, there's uh, there's a doomer and his not so doomer chick uh, wife living in that house. They've been there for four years in that 384 square foot shack on the side of the road. Uh, she seems fine with it. Uh, she seems totally fine with that little 384 foot shack on the side of the road. So uh, I know there are women out there uh, who, uh, you know, don't need all of that, uh, all of that crap. Because I got one living in my house. Ugh. But anyway, of course, uh, <laughs> you know, the... And the, and the comment, the, the no shit Sherlock, who was it? Was that you, George Nelson? Uh, uh, you know, after listening to my, uh, <laughs> that rant, uh, his only comment was, was, dude, you have given way, way too much of your fucking power uh, to that uh, mythical, fictional woman. Uh, that you know that you have built this Dulcinea fantasy around. 
that she doesn't exist, uh, dude. Uh, you, you have no fucking chance that without woman, and, and you've given her way too much fucking power. You, 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 you know, like, 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 no shit, Sherlock. I, what did I tell you, George? Uh, gee, do you think so? And, and, and of course, Dulcinea is loving every bit uh, of the uh, fucking power she has over me. Uh, she's pissing in her pants. Uh, laughing about uh, how she has ham bone uh, on her little puppet string. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the conundrum uh, with that whole thing uh, is the, you know, the position I'm, that I've gotten myself in with this woman uh, who I fell in love with the moment I laid my eyes on her four and a half fucking years ago is, uh, is, is there's no way that I am going to get uh, Dulcinea uh, out of my life until uh, I find another Doomer chick forever to take her place. So until I find another Doomer chick to take her place, I am fucking stuck uh, with, uh, w w with this uh, little sick, twisted game uh, that I'm playing with myself. And, uh, but, but the problem is uh, I can't find another Doomer chick to replace Dulcinea until I've gotten Dulcinea out of my life. So, I, I'm, I, I, I am kind of fucked. I understand that this is nobody's problem, uh, including Dulcinea. It's not, it's not her fucking problem. Uh, <laughs> she could give a fuck uh, whether I, I, I find another goddamn Doomer chick or not. I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. If, uh, if Dulcinea uh, wishes uh, that I would just find another fucking Doomer chick already, Hambone. Find something else to do with your fucking life. But, but I can't. As long as I got this one. Which I... But I don't have this one. Never will have this one. <laughs> anyway, but I... Uh, I did move my... Uh, I did move my pile of fish profile back uh, back to New York. You know, I, the the last one that I met down here, apparently, uh, her, her her idea of of a relationship is to keep sending me links to YouTube videos, usually songs, and uh, and and so I. Uh, sent her my my final goodbye email last night, and uh, I, I said, "Darling, uh, I said I've given up on you, Florida women, and I am heading to New York." And I said, "Here is one last YouTube video link for the fucking road," and I uh, sent her the link to my soft white underbelly interview just so she knows what she's missing all right but I am back at doomsday trailer and I have a bathroom vanity top to unload my guys